everyone. Welcome to the Art Workshop. My name is Christopher Epling. Thanks so much for tuning in today. On behalf of Pike TV, we really appreciate it. We have a really cool show in store for you today. We're going to be looking at a different medium that we've used in the past. We maybe touched on it maybe a couple times, but I think you'll like it and enjoy it quite a bit. Uh, remember, before we get started, though, you can check out all of our previous shows. So up to date, as of, well, uh, January 2023, we've recorded a little over 90. So you can check out all those on the YouTube channel, and that is Pike TV 99 on YouTube. And check out the playlist. There's a lot of cool stuff on there. So we're going to get started today. And in today's episode, we have, like I said, a very unique medium. Now, of course, we use the term medium is whatever you're using to draw with. So that could be mud. It could be um, sand uh, mixed with some pigments to create clay or something. But whatever you're using to create art with. And in our uh, show today, we're going to be using paint pens. Now, when we say art supplies, a lot of times you think, well, if I go to the art supply section of any given store, you uh, imagine and already kind of expect to find a lot of different mediums there. Now, what most people don't know, or at least I didn't really take into account, is that there's many, many other options for mediums all throughout the store from in the um, home improvement section to the school supply section to even electronics. And this is how I kind of stumbled across the Sharpie paint pen. Now, that brand is one brand of many. We're going to be using a couple of them today. But they're really cool. They're oil-based, so you can actually draw on top of other colors. So in most cases, when you're using one certain pigment, you lay that down. And then when you go to add to it, you'll either blend on it or you'll, you'll uh, manipulate that medium to maybe be a different color. But in this case, with a paint pen at least, uh, they're oil-based. So you can draw layer upon layer upon layer. So when we're thinking of, of, of a good um, subject matter today to do this, one that we could get all sorts of colors, um, we decided to land on a gecko. Now, with the gecko, um, of course, they're not, there's some um, in Appalachia, but the more common is probably the salamander or the newt. But um, the gecko is a fun subject to draw, and I want you now to join, join along with me. If you don't have paint pens at home, that's perfectly fine, but you can draw this portion with me and use whatever you have at home to color with but at least let me show you the application of how to use these in case you'd like to try one day, okay? So we're going to start out with a piece of paper. We're going to be drawing on mostly in this section right here and down, okay? So the gecko is going to be sort of like clinging onto the edge of the paper. At least that's the idea. Um, I'm just using a pencil. It's a mechanical pencil. But we're going to first start out by drawing a giant oval. It kind of looks like a football, okay? And once you have that drawn, I want you to jump over to the top right hand side and I want you to draw a circle here the best you can. See how many times it takes me to go in over and over and over just to get a circle or something similar to one. Now I'm going to jump over to the left hand side and I'm going to place another circle here. So we're forming the gecko's head. Okay. Like I said the body's going to be coming off sort of down to the uh, right hand side here. So we're going to draw this shape kind of coming down connecting so it looks like half or at least 90% uh, of an oval. We're cutting off the tip here. Now the gecko's hands will be on the sides of the paper so we'll draw one here. So just draw sort of a half an oval there. And down here right below the belly we'll draw the second one. Now these are the arms the gecko will be connecting up to the body like that. So you have one here and then you have another kind of bent backwards here. Okay. Now we have the general shape of, of the gecko. Now we start refining it a little bit. What I like to do is I'll go in and I'll get rid of certain things that's overlapping. So here, maybe a little bit here. So that the idea is you just want the general shape of whatever it is you're wanting to draw, okay? And you'll have overlapping parts like that that occur a lot. But let's work on the mouth of the gecko. So we'll start over on the here on the right, uh, left hand side, my other left, right? and we'll bring it across, up, down, connecting over here, okay? So it's just a line that sort of cross sections this oval. Now that will form the mouth. The top of the head is going to be about right here, like you would imagine it to be. Uh, the difference is though with the eyes, now they do need to be off of the head some, but we're going to connect it though with a shape like this so that it's actually connected to the body like that. You'll see a little bit below here and just a little bit below here. 
So now we're starting to get this general shape of a gecko now. Now one really distinct thing about the gecko is the eyes. So they are um, small slits. So almost like a snake's eyes, a poisonous snake I think is, has these slits. But And then the, the throat of course will come down to the body here on both sides. And there, we have the general shape now, the general look. Now we need to thicken up these arms just a little bit, so I may draw an additional line coming out. So we have two lines now connecting to the hand here. And we'll do the same here. The arms are pretty thin. Now one place you can actually see a gecko usually, if you can't find one in the wild, which is kind of hard to do. Um, if you go to a pet store, any local pet stores, they actually carry geckos usually. I think they're I think they're somewhat seasonal, but they're really fun to watch. They move so slow and every, every action is very deliberate. There we go. There's our gecko. Now, once we have this, the paint pens come in really handy because what we'll do is we're going to go back over this and we'll add color, okay? Now, with paint pens, though, you want to start out with a base. And before I do any of that, though, I'm going to darken in some of my pencil lines so you can see it pretty good because we're going to be adding color on top of this in a minute. The very last thing we'll do is actually go in and ink over top of it all. Okay. Just want to darken these lines in a little bit. That way when I start adding color you know what I'm doing and I know what I'm doing or hopefully. There we go. It's a little bit better. You can see the shape just a little bit easier now. So let's go ahead now and start with applying some color. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to put a little bit of yellow. Now this is actually a watercolor pencil. So how this works is you go in, you put your color down like this. And once you apply it, you take either a, a brush or maybe a aqua pen, which is a pen that holds water, um, and you go over top of it. Okay. I'll show you exactly what I mean in just a second. I'm only putting it in certain areas, if you notice that. I'm not putting it all over. Only certain areas of the gecko will have this tone of yellow. So you can use crayons, you could use colored pencils, and still get the effect I'm doing. Maybe not, not the uh, smooth transition from um, light to dark, which happens with watercolor, but you can still get, get the effect. Now, I'm going to put a little bit more yellow right here on the nose, tip of the head here, right here. There we go. Okay, now, we go in with our brush now, make sure it's good and wet, and you can see how this color just starts to spread out now, and that's what we want. Now, these oil-based pens, what, what happens is when you actually start to apply this in a minute, you'll see that they mark or apply the paint directly over top of whatever it is you're using. So, so like we talked about at the beginning of the show, if you have a certain medium you want to paint over, sometimes you can't because... Most mediums just mix together, but in the case with the, with the pink pens is that if it's oil-based, uh, that medium will lay on top of the existing medium below it. Sometimes it mixes, it depends on the color you're using and also the brand even. Now there's our, our yellow. Now I forgot one little thing, it's just inside the eyes here too, we want to put a little bit of yellow here and here, just on each side of the pupil a little dab of yellow. There we go. And there. That should be good for now. Let's worry now about green. So green is our base color. I'm using a few different tools today. This is just a regular based um, um, marker. It has two tips to it. This is a felt top marker. So we're going to go in now. Hopefully this is dried enough for us to do this. But we're going to start applying our green. And you can see now how this medium just sort of mixes with the other one. It doesn't really land on top of it. If this was super wet, then it would for sure blend even more. But the areas with yellow, you can see the yellow through the green. Okay, We're going to leave a little bit of white right around the mouth. We don't want to uh, color all the way down to the, to the mouth. Now, we're applying this color because we need a base color. Oil-based um, oil paint pens don't work so well if you, if you don't have some sort of a base color down, okay? 
So that's what this will be. We're not going to go so heavy underneath the chin here. So we won't go too close up into the, uh, into the mouth area. I'm just going to barely bring this color up. Something like that, okay? Now, for the arm, you just go ahead and just lay that base color right on top of everything here. You have your arm finished and the stomach area. That's one good thing about using brushes that have the thick wedge tip for them, is you can cover a lot of area pretty quickly. I didn't color the hands. I want those to be a different color altogether, and we'll approach that next. So we're not even got to the paint pens yet, but we're moving along. I think you'll enjoy it quite a bit seeing how it's applied. It has a really neat effect. Now there's our green, okay? Now the next thing we're going to do is go in with a little bit of orange, and after we do that, then we should be set to start working with those paint pens. This is just applying our base color. That's all this is. Inside the eye, we definitely want a lot of orange. Like that. And then also on the other side. Now if I'm moving pretty fast, I apologize. Um, you can follow at home though and watch the recorded shows on our YouTube page. You can slow me down and speed me up. And you can move along at your pace on those recorded shows. So be sure and check those out. There's a lot in there. Now, if you were to follow along, which we hope you do, that's the whole point of the show, uh, we'd love to see what you create. And you can do that and send it in to us and we'll share your creation here on the show. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be what I've done, if you want to share your own artwork, we encourage that too. You can send it in to us at PipeTV99 at Gmail. All right, let's go ahead now and mix that orange up a little more. It's not going to be super, super intense, but it will give the effect of that eye sort of being rounded more. A little more over here. There we go. Of course, the hands. There we go. And the other, they have little fingers, so little toes, and <laughs> they're strange little creatures, but they're really interesting to look at. Now, we're going to start getting into the actual paint pen section. This is a really fun part. Now, one thing about paint pens, though, you do have to shake them up a little bit. I'm going to start out with yellow. Let's give it a little shake. Let's see what we can come up with here. You can see how that yellow, hopefully, you can sort of just lays on top of the color. If we can get it to work. Yeah, you do have to mix it quite a bit. That's one thing about the paint pens. These were pre-mixed before we started, but sometimes if they're setting for a little bit, they will start to do like this one's doing here, which is not cooperating too well. There we go. A little bit better. Hopefully you can see that at home. Um, it's just resting right on top of that existing pigment. We just want a little bit more highlights here. We'll put a little bit down the side of the face. And over here, there we go. Underneath the eye just a little bit. And we start to see now down the side of the body too. Just a little bit here and there. This just helps offset that, that yellow. Um, and even starts to take on a little bit of an orange feel to it, even though it's it's absolutely yellow. And the other thing that helps too is allowing whatever you're putting on, putting on first, your base coat or whatever that might be, to dry thoroughly. Trying to apply the oil based on top of something that hasn't dried very well sometimes sometimes can give you a little bit of trouble. Okay. Now we're going to use some different colors. We're going to go in now with a little bit of white. So this is a huge um, paint pen. And let's just hope to goodness this is mixed up well enough for us to be able to see how it works. So let's see. It's getting there. Yeah, the one thing about these pens, though, if you let them set at all, they will definitely start to lose their effect. There we go. You should have heard it in the studio before the recording, me shaking up all these pins. All right, there. So you see how that kind of lightens up that whole area? It makes it a lot more brighter. Put 
a little bit of white, like an eye shine in the eye here. Mix it down. There we go. You can use your finger and mix this. Um, some, some people don't want to get that involved with it, but I don't care a bit to, to mix with my finger. But you may not want to do that, but if you don't care to get a little messy, you can. Now, the great thing about geckos is there's a tons of color, right? So not just, not just green, not just yellow, orange. There's tons of color in their body. And what I want to do next is I'm going to actually go back over here and I'm going to grab some blues and I'm going to grab a few reds and we're going to see what we can come up with, okay? Here we go. Let's first start off with some blue. I think we're going to do a little bit of light blue. And I'll show you the difference in, this is darker, this bit of work though. Just a few dots here and there like this, see? You go down the body. I'm not adding a whole lot, I just want to put a little bit of smudge of color here and there. On this side, a little bit. And then up here on the head. A few dots here and there. Some big, some small. There we go. You can see now how this starts to take a form. And form is when you start out with just a basic drawing of whatever it is you're doing, and you start to work with it so much that it turns into something that looks like a 3D object. And that's when you're actually getting that form in the, in the drawing, okay? around the base of the eye here. This is an orange paint pen. We'll add a little bit more intensity right around the edges of the eye and down the pupil. The pupils will be black once we're done, but. Now the hands are very, very, very bright. So I'm gonna add a touch of this right on top of each finger. Down this side, like that. Now what we can do is we can actually go back and forth a little bit. You can play around with, um, if you have access to different tools at home, I'm going to use a different type of felt marker here. I'm going to go in and we'll put a lighter blue now in these sections to kind of help blend in that darker blue of the paint pen. There we go. Now you can add as many dots as you want. You know, you can, you can really add color. It's up to you and what you would like to do on your own, of course. So if you want to put tons and tons of color in your, in your little lizard, you can. Are they in, I guess they are a lizard, technically. Maybe, probably not, but there we go. Around the base of the eye again. Darkening in that eye really makes it feel like there's actually like a socket there, you know, something's resting in it. Now we're going to grab, let's see what we can use now. Let's use a little bit of this green. This is a uh, different type of paint pen, different brand anyway. And you can see now this green is just different enough to start to pull a little bit of color out of there. And that's what we want. We want it to be just different enough. Now the mouth is, is gonna be, of course, a lot darker around the seam of the lips there. I guess it has lips, but <laughs> geckos surely do, right? Okay, and we'll add a little bit more down here at the bottom in terms of red beside that orange, because I'm gonna pull that color down so it doesn't look like it's just resting on top of that yellow. A little bit of red underneath here. Paint pens are so fun to use, but they're very finicky. So they can actually, like I've said, they can dry up on you. So you've got to be careful about that. Let's go back to this again. We'll put a little bit more watercolor in there. Kind of pull these fingers, the color down more. Now this is oil based. So when you add water to oil, it, even with even with paint, uh, I mean with uh, art supplies, you, you get the same kind of effect, it doesn't mix very well. So 
What this will do though is it'll blend, but it's not going to take away from that paint marker at all. It's just going to blend that watercolor pigment. That's it. All right, now I'm going to work a little bit now with with some um, some black. And when you do this, this is another example. Art supplies being where you wouldn't expect them. So this was bought at a home improvement store. <laughs> it's uh, for con contractors to use, and it just makes a really really good drawing pen though. It's got a, a, a very, very sharp tip, but you can push down a little bit and you get this um, kind of a little bit wider tip too as you're going. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around, I'm going to trace all the art that I've created with the pencil lines, okay? And what I don't want to do too much though is I don't want to push down super hard on these edges that has a light color. So like the eyes and stuff, I want to be a thin line. But then when you get closer to the body, you can thicken it up more. Now here's a really important part. So when you're creating the look of the mouth, you want these lines to extend below the eye and come out. Because once you form this on each side, you can connect it. So I would draw the sides first then go back in and finish it out like that okay now we're going to work on the rest of the body so we'll work down here the arms all you're doing now is just tracing over your work so you've already done all the hard work this is just tracing this is probably my favorite part of a drawing, as you see it come together. Before this, you know, we just have pencil lines and some color, but you can see what it will look like in your head, though. You can imagine that finished look. There we go. And then this hand. Like that. There we go. Now. The gecko is looking pretty good. We have a lot more color to play around with over here. And what I'd like to do with that is something a little different. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get, grab my pencil again. And I'm actually gonna put glasses on this gecko, reading glasses. So I'm gonna start at the bottom over here on this side. Pretty big glasses too, right? So right here on this side. Now the glasses will be a black frame glasses, so we can uh, play around some color on top of that black. So I'm drawing two parallel lines, or four actually, above and below each eye first, okay? Once I have that, I wanna know sort of about how, how big these are gonna be, so I may draw the, the brim, or bridge of the glasses here. That gives me an idea to know how big these frames are, okay? Once I have that, I can sort of draw out from it like this. So that kind of gives you a little bit of a guideline to go by to frame up the glasses so they're both sort of the same shape, same size on each side. may not be perfect, but it's a pretty useful little, little tool to do. It's just deliberately place lines so that it makes it easier on yourself on the next step, okay? There we go. Just give our gecko some reading glasses. And a little line going back, like going towards the, the head here. There we go. Now, once you have this done, all you really need to do with this, let me try the black, we'll see what happens. Actually, I'm gonna use the good old carpenter marker again. Carpentry marker, I should say. I'm just gonna trace over these lines. Exactly how they appear. There we go. You see I'm going around the edge first, then I'll go back and worry about the inside part. Now they're not gonna be perfect, but what gecko do you know that really wears glasses? So it's okay, we'll get there. There we go. 
Now after I've traced this in, I want to color it all black. I want to fill in the entire frame and all solid black, okay? So I'll go back over it now. This is where it comes super handy to have a marker that is pretty flexible with the tip on it. So this one, like I said, you can make really sharp lines or really thick lines. Going right over top of all the color we put down. Same thing for the sides, just solid black. Now hopefully this dries sort of quickly and then we'll, we'll put a little bit of color in these glasses with the paint pens. If it dries, looks like it's going to. Almost there. We'll go ahead and fill up every bit of that space. There we go. Now we just have one more side to work on. And hopefully, while we're working on this, the other part dries sort of quickly. There we go. Now the paint pen, if it's shook up well, <laughs> should apply pigment right on top of this. Sometimes though, like if you were to go in and actually try to draw on top of this ink with a crayon or colored pencil, and especially watercolor, it's not gonna do much. You might be able to see it, but not very well. But that oil base really works if you're wanting to add layers of color bright colors. There we go. There's our glasses. Now, hopefully, we'll see what happens, but I'm actually going to use a little bit of blue. And the idea here is you want to kind of, that's just absorbing it, you want to put color that you've used in the drawing at least bits and pieces of it. So this is being absorbed. So it's not dried quite well enough yet, I don't think, to do this, maybe. Here's the true test. Because it looks dry, but it, it can trick you. Because what happens is it looks dry, but the actual tooth of the paper is still holding in a lot of that. Here we go, the pigment. So see there how it's just soaking it up? Yeah, it's gotta dry a little bit more, probably. But after it does dry, you could put a lot of color in these in these brims and stuff. Put some highlights. It doesn't look like it's going to work too well. I'm not cooperating with me right now. It's just soaking it right up. You can see that, how it just, it's there, then it goes away. The more you do it, of course, it'll start to lay on more. But And that's one thing, too, about with the oil-based stuff. Like I said, it's oil-based, so you definitely, definitely want whatever it is you're working on to dry well, because it, uh, it's not going to work that well with water if it's wet, all wet at all. So as you can see a little bit of color here. Starting to pop out a little bit more. Yeah, if that was if that was already dried all the way, we should be able to see a huge difference. So you can see this area down here is dried a little more. There we go. Put a little more detail around the mouth while that dries. All right. We may have to imagine <laughs> what this would look like if it's dry, but you can still, if it, if, it, if it does dry pretty well, you can add that to it. And you can go with all sorts of colors too. So we even have do some yellow in there. See how that's working out a little bit better now? So you want to use the same colors you used in the body and just put dashes of it here and there along the glasses. And what that does is it just helps the eye to see and pick out those colors. So it notices, oh yeah, I see, you know, I see this same sh this sh shade here is up here. And it draws the eye down towards that other color. So the eye, your eye naturally wants to see, connect those together. We'll try green. I don't think it's going to... It's working a little bit. If this is just a little bit more dry. 
but it's starting to like sort of layer on itself right now. There we go. Just dashes of it here and there. So you can see how that would work, right? Let me put a little more green in the body now that it's stride a little more. Yep, a lot of shaking going on when it comes to these pins though. You're gonna be shaking a lot. But the effects you get from them is pretty cool. Very bright colors. A lot, a lot of intensity with the colors. So if you like bright colors and you want to draw something that has a ton of value in terms of light to dark, then this is the way to go. Paint pens all the way. Still a little more yellow. And we'll call it a day. If you push down on these too, what happens is the ink flows out a lot more. And if you peck them or kind of dash them a little bit, it'll really come out on you. So be careful about that, pushing down so much. I hope you had fun today. I hope you enjoyed it. The paint pens do work really well. They work a lot better though once your surface dries. So make sure you allow that to happen before you uh, apply a lot, of, a lot of pigment. But if you did follow along with us, we'd love to see it. Remember, you can send it in to us at PikeTV99 at Gmail. Uh, include your name, whatever else you'd like for us to know about yourself. Uh, we'll share it on here and let everybody see what you've done, okay? So, the Gecko, paint pens, it's a plus. I like both, and I think it worked out pretty good. Just remember, allow it to dry. Oil and water just still doesn't mix even today. But thanks so much for tuning in. Um, we enjoy uh, the show and having you here with us. So until next time, I'm Christopher Epling on behalf of Pike TV. Keep drawing.